All right, I'm the guy that does the yellow post, and I'm all over Facebook. I'm a retired Baptist preacher, kind of theology I received, came out of Dallas Theological Seminary. And I'm here because I love talking to atheists, and I mean today to defend Pliny. And if you're a Christian and you're using Pliny, you better be aware of the counter-arguments you're going to receive by using Pliny. Listen, who is Pliny the Younger? Pliny the Younger was a Roman author, an administrator who served as the governor of Bithynia in Asia Minor, in northern Galatia, northern Turkey. He was the adopted son of naturalists known as Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Elder was a general in the army of Tatian. The 10th book, written around 112 AD, speaks about Christianity in the province of Bithynia and also provides some facts about Jesus. Pliny's letter is rather lengthy, so we're going to focus our attention on what he said about Christians and Christ. Problem number one is the atheist is going to tell you Pliny never met Jesus, but I don't see that as a problem at all. Pliny never met Pontius Pilate. Pliny never met the Caesars that he talks about. Tacitus, a contemporary to Pliny, they lived at the same time, my friend never met any of the people that he talked about. Another thing you'll want to remember is Plutarch wrote the first biography of Alexander the Great. He wrote it 400 years after he was dead. Arian did the very same thing. Never met Alexander the Great. And all they had to work with was copies of copies of copies, handed down information, and that is believable history. Another guy who wrote about the wars in Greece between Athens and Sparta was a man named Thucydides. Thucydides. I got to practice on that one. He is not mentioned in history for 250 years after he supposedly wrote about those wars. This is all believable history. You're not going to be going to school to learn about Alexander the Great with, hey, I saw that. You're not going to have contemporary corroborating eyewitness account to what he did. Sure, we have coins of Alexander the Great. Sure, we know he existed, but a coin doesn't tell you what he did. But Plutarch brings credible history about Alexander the Great without ever having met him, and Pliny does the very same thing about the very people that he describes. So what does he say? Watch now. They, the Christians, were in the habit of meeting on a certain fixed day before it was light when they sang in alternate verses a hymn to the Christ. This is a reference of Jesus of Nazareth. And they sang those hymns to the Christ as to a God, and they bound themselves by solemn oaths not to have or do any wicked deeds, but to never commit fraud, adultery, or to falsify their word, deny trusts when they should be called upon to deliver it. After which it was their custom to separate and then reassemble to partake of food, but food of an ordinary and an innocent kind. At this point, Pliny adds that Christianity attracted persons of all social ranks, all ages, both sexes, male, female, and from both the city and the country. From Pliny, we can be taught several things, and in another video, I'll deal about those several things. But for now, I want to focus our attention on the importance of Pliny, who describes Jesus seen as a god. In the book of Jeremiah, which is one of hundreds of scriptures in the Old Testament, God promised that a Messiah was coming. Pliny calls him the Messiah. And that Messiah would be God Almighty, Jehovah God. Now watch, in Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6, it says, Behold, the day is come, says the Lord, Jehovah, God's personal name, the Tetragrammaton, the Hashem of Judaism today, Y-H-W-H, God's personal name. You could very easily say, Behold, the day is come, says the I Am, the Eternal One. But God... And he says, I will raise to David a righteous branch, and the king will reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice on the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And watch now, this ruler, this savior, this king that's coming, it says, and this is his name whereby he will be called. He is called the great I am, Jehovah 
our righteousness. There is zero reason not to believe that Jesus is indeed the Christ referred to by Pliny, and the Christ was promised to be God. The very name YHWH is attributed to the ruler, the king who would come and save his people, and his name would be called YHWH, Jehovah our righteousness. Jehovah is just an English transliteration of the four-letter tetragrammaton Y-H-W-H, which means the great I am. The Septuagint translates the great I am, Y-H-W-H, as the great I am. And that brought 70-some Hebrew scholars to translate the Old Testament into Greek. And they used, I am that I am. The Old Testament predicted the coming of a Messiah. And the Messiah would be God. Why is it that Pliny describes this Messiah worshipped as God? Because the Old Testament says the Messiah was supposed to be God. Ask Thomas and Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. My Lord and my God. There are countless hundreds of Bible verses to demonstrate that Christians in the Bible believed that Jesus was God, and all the men that followed the apostles, men like Polycarp, Justin Martyr, all believed that the Messiah, Jesus, was God. In the Bible, the Pharisees accused Jesus of witchcraft, and I wanted to talk about that, but today we're going to focus our attention on God. The Romans, outside the Bible, coming out of the statements made by Pliny clearly demonstrates that Jesus was the Messiah, listen carefully now, and he, my friend, was worshipped as God. History and archaeology both confirmed Jesus was seen as the mighty God. Paul believed Jesus was God. Romans, uh, historian Pliny describes Jesus as God, and as you'll see, archaeology definitely demonstrated that the one who died on the cross was worshipped as God. The rabbis outside the Bible, Jewish rabbis, describe people worshipping Jesus as God would be cursed. The very men that took over the apostles' churches, called the patristic elders or fathers, all believed Jesus was God. There is countless evidence to support the fact that the Messiah was going to be God. It's an inevitable statement that we find in the Bible. You can see from the statement made by Pliny that Christ was worshipped as deity by early believers. Pliny refers in his letter to the teachings of Jesus that they gathered on a specific day. To what? To sing hymns to the Christ, which is Jesus, as God. Roman historians and Greek historians like Celsus describe Jesus being worshipped as God, seen as God, because Celsus, like Lucian here, is a modern-day critic. You could look to Bill Mayer. They kind of represent the Bill Mayer man mentality. Lucian and Celsus both describe Jesus worshipped by Christians as God. Why would you attribute to a nobody from Galilee the title the Christ, which, by the way, is done by Suetonius, another Roman historian, Tacitus, and Pliny, to a nobody, a nobody from Galilee. The Talmud makes clear reference to the Son of God, a definite reference to Jesus. Author Michael Green quotes Rabbi Eleazar writing at about 160 AD, God saw that a man, the son of a woman, would come forward in the future who would attempt to make himself God and lead the whole nation of Israel astray. Are you serious here? There's ample evidence that the Messiah that was coming was the Messiah that was supposed to be God. Why do I believe there's a God? Well, the best argument is the whole Bible is about the Messiah, which is Jesus, and Jesus was seen as God. Here is the scratching or the graffiti found in Rome, and on a dying cross is a donkey and a mule, and there's a Alexemenos here who says he's worshiping his God who died on a cross. 
How do we know this is a reference to Jesus? Tertullian, living in the second century, uh, confirms it in the Notions 11. He says, some among you have dreamed that our God is the head of a donkey, an absurdity which Cornelius Tacitus first suggested in the fourth book of his histories. He relates that the Jews in their migration into the desert out of Egypt were suffering for want of water, escaped by following guides some wild donkeys. In other words, they were following Moses. Moses, because the Jews were stubborn like mules. Seriously, there is zero reason for us today not to look to Jesus as the promised Messiah and that in fact he would be called, what? He would be called God, Jehovah, our righteousness. In our next video, we're going to deal with the reply that Pliny received from Emperor Trajan. And I can assure you, Pliny's not going to lie to the Roman emperor. Let's do it again.